Alright guys, so what is up? So I'm just going to start off by saying straight away that sorry if I sound a little quiet. I'm currently doing this um, with my son in bed just to see how how he goes with me talking in the room while he is asleep. So obviously we had the event week this week. Uh, one of the events being two times money in RP on stunt races one of my personal favorites and specialties we are going to be going through 12 different things that you can do to help guarantee you a win now obviously these are very well known tactics so a lot of people will be doing them but we will be going through them nonetheless just in case any of you new players are going to be doing stunt races especially for this week so we are going to start off with the very first thing you have to do is the boost at the start of the race now normal races or well, normal racing games you would just hold down the throttle and boom you'd go when it says go no on this you keep your finger off the accelerator until you see the go so you'll have three two one go as soon as the go appears on your screen boom on the accelerator you get a boost a bit like getting boost from the um, green arrows occasionally on maps especially in the stunt races you get a boost off the beginning rather than having wheel spin you're boom, straight off going so you gotta make sure you're hitting that accelerator on go not before not uh, not earlier not any later otherwise it will not happen Second is the wall riding in the tubes. Now this helps because of something else that we will be next. But what you want to do is you want to let the tube do the turning for you. Because trust me, it will make you go much faster if you let the tube if you've got a tube going around a 90 degree turn, let that tube turn the car for you. All you gotta do is keep it from spinning let the tube get you around that corner uh, because basically what this does is it makes it one easier for you two makes it quicker because of the bumping of the tube the bumping gives you a little boost don't ask me why I don't know why but it just does and that brings us on to the next part is the curb boosting where if you consistently go on and off of a sidewalk or the apex like the white and red lines that you get either side of the track bump on and off of them constantly that boosting will give you a little boost as well this is why I said about doing it on the two on in the tubes around the corner because you have bumps and then bumps will boost your speed don't believe me go ahead try it out yourself trust me curb boosting works everyone does it next off we have got braking before a jump now this probably sounds a bit weird being well, why you break in before a jump now this is not every single jump okay some jumps you have to do but when it, obviously this is when you've learned the tracks you know what jumps you need to do you know what jumps you can avoid doing this is ones where you are going up a very steep hill onto a straight road ahead so you're not jumping over anything you're just going up a hill and then going on a straight road basically what you want to do is not because they will have boosts on there to encourage you to go full throttle flying up in the air no you don't want to do that what you want to do is you want to use the boosts to get up to the top of the ramp and then just before you get to the end or a little bit before you want to brake slow down so you're not wasting time in the air you're already on the ground going accelerating you're not wasting time waiting to land and then accelerate so you want to get to the top brake slow down once you're on the straight full throttle again and you're away rather than wasting time in the air waiting to get down next number five loops in turns or loops in tubes even this 
kind of goes alongside the curb boosting and like the bumps where is if you do this is more beneficial in tubes where you've got to go downhill because if you're going downhill at high speed chances are you're going to come off the track and get a little bit of air which obviously stops you from going any faster because you're in the air you can't accelerate but if you go around looping in the tubes you're always got your wheels on a surface you're always accelerating because you have the two options you'd rather accelerate down a hill than fly down a hill because flying you can only go so fast if you're accelerating you're going to keep going especially if it's a bumpy tube number six is low jump when they're leaving the tube now this is a little bit difficult it's a little bit more difficult basically it's if you are jumping from a jump that's in a tube and again they're going to have boosts to encourage you to go full throttle in the air again it's going to be one of them things where you have to learn the tracks to know which ones you can and can't do this on but what this is is loop um, waving back and forth in the tube as you make your way up to the end and then before you get to the end make sure your car is on the way down from a curve before leaving because this way again you'll be spending less time in the air you'll be landing on the floor quicker and you'll be able to accelerate quicker rather than wasting time in the air so again that one's a little more difficult but it works zigzagging in the tube again is alongside with the one we've just done with lowering a lower jump from the tube you want to zigzag because that is better than just going straight down a tube because you're going to be also using the gravity because obviously you're zigzagging you're going to be using the gravity when going down the zigzag to go up again and down it's all about gravity most of these you want to be able to be using the gravity in these tubes to your benefit number eight soft landing you want to make sure you are getting them landings soft and smooth otherwise again you're going to be wasting time accelerating back up to a speed that you were just at if you land incorrectly your car will either bump and have a little bit of a slide or in some cases stop completely like there are some big jumps out there that you have to do and you're going to be coming in landing practically straight down and if you don't land it right you're just going to be stopped dead straight and you've got to waste time accelerating but someone close behind could land it perfectly boom stolen first place or two people behind you boom boom stolen first and second you're then in third so you want to make sure that you are landing soft some ways are uh, that I found is landing with your rear wheels first only briefly but obviously you've got the straight landing tip it up just a bit just so your back wheels land on the ground first because if the front lands first most chances are you are going to well flip you're, you're going to flip over but if you land with the back wheels down first the only place your car has to go is down okay it can only go the front end can only go down you can't flip backwards you can only go down you've already got your back wheels on boom land go same with in landing in a tubes if you jump if you're jumping into a tube aim towards the left or the right of the tube so you land on the side of it and then you can accelerate down that little bit of the tube with the aid of gravity boom soft landing it'll be like you've never even left the ground number nine is a very easy one however I will leave a note for this uh, some race well all races you can have it either off or on so pay attention to this one is slipstreaming now if you don't know what slipstreaming is this is where you are behind a car that is going at a fast pace and you are behind that car as well you will get boost from that car because of 
like reality wise because as a car drives forward the wind behind it is getting pulled behind if that makes sense so you're driving the winds getting pulled behind it as well so if your car is behind that car the wind that is getting pulled is also pulling your car towards it giving you that extra speed but in game terms all you got to do is go behind a car there'll be white two white strips two white lines either side of the car you know you're getting the slipstream then and you just it's basically like a constant boost but obviously you got to remember to move out of the way of the car in front of you otherwise you're just going to crash into it he'll spin or you'll spin or you'll both spin you'll both be angry Number 10, quite obvious, avoid contact. Okay, so that's a pretty obvious one. Basically, just any contact that you are, any, well, any contact that you have is risk of you flying off the track. Because most of these stunt races are not on the ground. They're all in the air. So if you fall off the track, you have to respawn. There's no way you're getting back on the track. You've got to respawn. So you want to be able to avoid the contact of other players. Again, which means learning the track, learning how to take the corners correctly to be able to avoid any collision. Or, to make it easier, if you're hosting a race, just put it as a non-contact. You won't have to worry about other players crashing into you. But that also means that you cannot slipstream either. Okay, so if you've got a non-contact race, you cannot slipstream and you cannot have catch-up. <coughs> catch-up being the person in first place is going slower than everyone else behind him. Hence the term catch-up. So the person in first goes slower, position two to whatever, however many you people you've got in that race can go faster and be able to catch up. Number 11 is the checkpoints themselves. They have arrows in them. They are yellow. They have blue arrows. Two blue arrows. Them arrows are important. They are telling you which direction the next checkpoint is in. Now, all of these stunt races are on racetracks. Okay, there's not going to be any racetracks that are have a checkpoint pointing in a in like behind you but you gotta go straight forward and then do some weird loop stuff no these checkpoints are going to be pretty close together and they're going to be telling you where they are so pay attention because it will help you get round the track at fast time because you already know which direction you're going to have to go in before you even get to that next checkpoint you're going to know where you're aiming to and obviously number 12 is shortcuts now nearly every single track has a shortcut it's not an official shortcut it's just shortcuts that people have come across and found over the years some of them being in the middle of a race some of them being at the end of a race so just kind of I mean, if you if you Google it, I'm sure there'll be something that comes up on shortcuts and things to be able to help you get around the track easier. I know some of them, one is, I think it's called Mount Chiliad with supercars, and you race down, obviously Mount Chiliad is point to point, and right at the end, you've got a long track down the mountain that you then have to jump into a tube and then boost out of that tube to get to the finish line but if you go to the right hand side of the ramp just before you jump into the tube there's a gap between the jump and the edge of the actual racetrack itself if you go in that bit it will still get you there um, it just you just got to avoid some trees but it'll be a much easier smooth land but it is risky all of these shortcuts are risky so only do them if you know you can achieve it or you definitely need to. <coughs> like If you're literally just behind first place and you know you're not going to be able to get past and you know there's a shortcut, if you think you can do it, if you think you can guarantee that shortcut, 
do it. If you don't think you can do it, don't risk it because a person in front of you could mess up. Especially if it's a jump, they might land poorly, you might land fantastically, take first place from them. But that's all I've got for you today, 12 little tricks and hints and tips and whatever you want to call them to aid you in the sport, well, in the stunt races um, of GTA. Now, on the screen, probably would have already started, but the cars that are on screen are ones that are competitive at, um, obviously, at the races themselves. Some of them being pretty obvious, being the Krieger or the Emerus, and the Itali GTO and the Pariah. The Itali GTO and Pariah are the two top sports cars. Itali GTO is better for races that have tubes in it because of the boosting on the bumps and the curbs. The Pariah is better at ones that don't have many tubes in it, being a more straight line, because the Pariah, if you're new, is faster than any other well it's faster than any civilian vehicle in the game it's faster than every supercar why i don't know but it just is um the krieger is one of the top supercars because of its four wheel drive and fast acceleration and krieger is again the same i don't think it's got four wheel drive but it's still got good acceleration now some of the vehicles that are good are actually the ad, not the adder the nero custom i've used that and won the races in that the i don't think i've got a picture of it but the itali gtb or G, gto i'm not sure it's, it's i'm not sure which one it is um, but again that's good there's a lot of cars that are good and very winnable but obviously it's up to you you test out what cars you think are good and you use them so obviously on screen are going to be the ones that are good but end of the day it's up to you it's not so much about the car it's the driver at the end of the day I don't care what anyone says it's all about the driving because people keep saying that the Krieger is the best and the most amazing. I'm beating Kriegers in Nero Customs. Okay, so it's kind of embarrassing for everyone else when there's like eight Kriegers from second to ninth. And then there's me coming first about 20 seconds ahead in a Nero Custom. It's a bit embarrassing for them. Because they've all got them Kriegers thinking they're the fastest and then I come by. Yeah. So don't, it's a perfect example, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't think because the person's a low level, they don't know what they're doing. Okay, so watch out for that. But let me know in the comments if this video was helpful. If it was helpful in any way, then please leave a like. As before, leave any comments on your favourite car. What's your favourite car to race in? What's your favourite car to cruise in? In free mode of GTA Online, and if there's anything else you would like me to test out, if there's any cars you would like me to test, then do leave them in the comments below, and I will do a video on them. Well, I'll try and put them all into one video on how they perform. But again, it's not about the car, it's the driver. So if you do go ahead and enjoy, then obviously subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified on any updates or, or videos I unleash to the channel. And I will see you all in the next one.